Every year, my family somehow manages to throw a New Year's Eve party without fail. Even if it's raining, or if the year wasn't that great, they've always thrown a huge party. The decorations thrown around the house made it seem so extravagant, but I know the real reason they had these events, to show off to everyone else. This year, I decided that I had had enough. Instead of having to force a happy smile, and greeting relatives I had no real connection with. I decided to run away. Not literally run away from home, but just for New Year's Eve. My friends picked me up just before the celebration began, and in my backpack were a bunch of fireworks meant for the end of the party. Three of my best friends tagged along, Summer, Zal, and Finn. After talking for a bit, we decided we should drive out somewhere quiet and empty, blow up the fireworks. We came across an open cornfield, and there was a small convenient clearing, almost like someone made a path for us to go through. Finn seemed reluctant to actually go into the cornfield, but the rest of us managed to persuade him. Zal carried the backpack of fireworks for us, and we continued to walk down the cleared path. Within the path, there was a clearing. I thought it was a good place to set up for the night, even though there were still two other paths continuing deeper into the cornfield. But, Summer and Zal seemed to really want to explore more. Finn and I gave each other a worried look, because we weren't really sure if this place was actually vacant. They promised to be careful, so we agreed as long as they came back quickly. Even though there were four of us, Splitting up just didn't seem like a good idea, especially since this place was so big, and it was so late at night. Finn and I sat down on the blanket we brought, and chatted about what our New Year's resolutions were. He mentioned something about eating more meat, which I thought was ironic, because most people usually tried cutting down on that stuff. My main goal was to be less cautious of everything, but situations like this made it hard. That's when a gigantic firework went off in the distance. We looked around and noticed that Zao took the bag of fireworks with him. Finn and I knew that it was probably him setting it off, but we couldn't figure out if it was just a prank or if it was some sort of signal. We were about to get up and go after him, but two familiar faces made their way out of the extra pass. It was Summer and Zao, who both looked surprisingly unfazed about the firework going off. I also noticed that Zhao no longer had the backpack filled with fireworks with him. Before I could point it out, we made eye contact. Normally, Zhao's eyes were maroon, but now they were just pure black. I glanced over at Summer, and her light brown eyes were black too. To be honest, I thought it was probably just a lighting, and that I was being paranoid for no reason so I didn't say anything to them. Whenever I brought up supernatural stuff, I usually got made fun of anyways. Finn yelled at Zhao for losing the bag of fireworks, then said he would go out and find them. He grabbed my hand, and before I knew it, we were walking deeper into the cornfields. I could feel Summer and Zhao staring down at us, but I didn't dare to look back. Their eyes just freaked me out too much. Once we were far enough, Finn grabbed my shoulders and looked into my eyes. He had blue eyes, and I had gold eyes, so it was easy for us to tell if our eyes suddenly turned black. Finn was also pretty tall, so he looked over to make sure there was no one nearby, and told me he noticed their eyes looked different too. The reason he dragged me away from the two of them was because he didn't trust them, and he thought we should leave them here and call someone else to get them. At first, I found the idea pretty extreme. If they truly weren't our friends, then we dodged a bullet. But if they were our friends, imagine if something actually bad happened to them after we ditched them. That's when another firework went off deeper down the path. We decided that it was best to put as much distance between us and Summer and Zell. So we followed the direction of the firework once we made it there, we found Sal and Summer sitting in another clearing. It surprised me a bit, 
because there was no way they could have made it all the way down here without us hearing or seeing anything. Summer asked us where the snacks from the car were, and we were both confused. They said that we followed them down the path soon after they left, and that we just went to go grab food from the car right before appearing again. Zao also pointed out that our eyes looked back to normal. Finn and I froze once we heard that, grasping how similar these situations were. Then I told him about the weird encounter we just had too. That's when we realized it was a mistake to come here and we needed to leave as soon as possible. In the distance, Finn claimed he saw something coming towards us on the left path, so we went down the path on the right instead. While walking down, a bunch of fireworks went off in the clearing we were just at. We all looked at Zhao and saw that he left behind the backpack. At this point, we decided that the fireworks just weren't worth it and spread it down the path back to the car. Once we were all back in the car and ready to go, we watched as a bunch of fireworks went off in the part of the cornfield that we were just at. Finn hurried up and drove off, not wanting to stick around to see what set them off. In the rearview mirror, I saw myself, standing at the edge of the cornfield with pure black eyes. The other me held its hand up to wave goodbye, and I clenched my hand over my mouth as something pulled her back in. We ended up going back to Summer's house and looking up the cornfield online. Our faces collectively fell as we realized those weren't mysteriously placed paths. They were part of a crop circle, and the spot we were in was directly in the middle. <laughs>